Number 10, the James Franco video. This one remains a mystery, so it makes sense that one of the first things Heard will try to clear up is what really happened with James Franco. She got grilled about their relationship while she was on the stand when Depp's lawyers brought up a late night visit by Franco to Heard's apartment in May 2016, which depicted the two getting physically close. You can even see the moment where Franco lays his head on her shoulder, but when asked about the reason he came to her apartment that night after 11 p.m., she said, quote, because he was my friend and he lived next door, quite literally next door. Even though Heard vehemently denied any implications of infidelity, the video footage is ambiguous at best. In her testimony, Heard explained that she was close friends with Franco, whom she made two movies with. But did she really put him in the friend zone? Because Depp did testify that he thought they were having an affair and he would apparently get very jealous about their relationship. That's something she will most likely have to address if she wants to get the public back on her side. Number 9. Cheating with Elon Musk Three years ago, Depp accused Heard of cheating on him with her boyfriend Elon Musk, whom she dated publicly after their divorce. This exact accusation also made it into the defamation lawsuit in March 2019. The legal documents read, quote, Unbeknownst to Mr. Depp, no later than one month after his marriage to Miss Heard, she was spending time in a new relationship with Tesla and SpaceX founder Elon Musk. It goes on to say that while Depp was out of the country filming in March 2015, Eastern Columbia Building personnel testified that Miss Heard received Musk late at night in their shared penthouse. And she specifically asked front desk staff to give her friend Elon access to the building's parking garage and the penthouse elevator late at night. And get this, the front desk staff would go on to testify that they saw Musk leaving the building the next morning. If the actress ever hopes to clear her name, she is going to need to set the record straight about her relationship with Elon Musk because even after Depp won the trial, he tweeted support for both of them, saying, quote, at their best, each of them is amazing. Number eight, her ex-assistant's claims. The testimony from Amber Heard's ex-personal assistant, Kate James, who claimed that while working for Heard, she was verbally aggressive towards her and would send a barrage of hateful text messages on the regular. And when asked for evidence of these messages, James replied with a straight answer, quote, I was using a phone that was logged into her iCloud account. When she terminated my employment, she deleted all of the texts from the cloud which proves that Heard was calculating enough to essentially wipe away all the evidence of her wrongdoing. I mean, the whole reason she wrote the op-ed was to stand up to powerful men who use their position to mistreat those beneath them. But that's exactly what she was doing to all the people that worked under her. Like when she screamed at Depp's sound engineer for daring to talk to her. James also claimed that Heard essentially stole her story about being violently attacked and twisted it into her own. In her tell-all book, the actress will most likely expose why she suddenly fired James in 2015 without much explanation other than that she couldn't afford her salary of $25 an hour. Talk about suspicious. Number 7. The UK Trial When referring to the UK trial that Depp lost, Heard said, quote, there was another trial that dealt with the same substantive issues and had even more evidence in. What she's talking about, of course, is that the London court rejected Depp's defamation lawsuit and ruled that 12 of the 14 alleged incidents noted by the newspaper and that their headline calling Depp a wife beater was proved to a civil standard. He even appealed to overturn the verdict but it was unsuccessful and shortly after the ruling the actor stepped down from Fantastic Beasts because his reputation was torn to shreds. But it's true that there were quite a few differences between the two cases, namely the decision makers. So the case was tried in front of a judge in the UK and in front of a jury in the US. Heard is not going to let anyone forget the fact that she won the first case and will probably delve into the 12 incidents of domestic violence, which were proven to be true. Heard and her lawyer Elaine Bredhoft kept bringing up these facts during their respective post-trial interviews on NBC. She's clearly dying to reveal just what was proven about Depp in the first trial. Number six, the audio recordings. The audio recordings played during Johnny Depp's testimony show Heard admitting to starting a physical fight between them and downplaying his reaction to the incident. They were discussing their explosive March 2015 Australia fight that resulted in Depp's right middle finger being severed at the tip. In what was basically a confession, she said, quote, I'm sorry I hit you like this, but I didn't punch you. 
She also told him to grow up and called him a baby. The recording was damning evidence which got the jury to consider that it might have been her who was the instigator in the relationship. When speaking on NBC, she said that the tapes were edited after being uploaded online. Quote, what you hear in those clips are not evidence of what was happening. She claimed that the 20 second clips are not representative of the two or three hour conversations from which they came from. Now, if she wants to get any credibility back, she's going to have to back up those claims and release the full audio from those conversations and not just write about it in her book. Number five, exposing her lawyers. There's no question about whether or not Heard will try to throw her lawyers under the bus. After all, Dr. Shannon Curry evaluated her for 12 hours and said that she often externalizes blame. One of the ways she could do this is by exposing what it was that her lawyers instructed her to do in the courtroom. In fact, throughout the proceedings, many people question the competence of her defense team, and it's not hard to see why. Like the viral moment where Heard's lawyer, Adam Nadelhaft, objected to his own question, or when Elaine Bredhoft continually questioned Dr. Curry about muffins. In fact, she forgot to turn on her microphone so often that there's now a funny compliment of it online. There was even a clip posted online of her leaving the courtroom, which has since gone viral. After she was being questioned by Bredhoft, her attorney conceded that she had no more questions and the judge told her to go and sit with her counsel. But instead, she chose not to sit with Bredhoft and instead just walked out of the room. Number four, her real finances. The trial has raised some serious questions about whether Heard's pockets are deep enough to foot the bill that she owes debt. Exactly 10.35 million. The actress had admitted that she was unable to donate the $7 million to charity after her divorce in 2017 because her ex-husband had filed a $50 million lawsuit against her. But if Heard cannot fulfill her obligation to pay debts damages, the court may choose to take part of her current and future wages. But Heard's messy financial issues are now coming to light, as Terence Doherty, an executive for the ACLU, testified about a $3.5 million pledge that Heard made to the organization after her divorce settlement with Depp. The fact is that only 1.3 million of the 3.5 million has been made so far, and Heard suspended her payments to the ACLU in 2019 due to financial difficulties. After their divorce, she applied for spousal support, asking for $50,000 per month to cover her various expenses, including $10,000 for rent, $2,000 for eating out, and $10,000 for pet supplies and legal costs. She's clearly living above her means, and many people wonder how how exactly it is that she's going to pay debt back. Number three, perjury. In a statement given to ET, a spokesperson from the Australian Department of Agriculture, Water and Environment said that they are, quote, investigating allegations of perjury by Ms. Heard during court proceedings for the 2015 illegal importation of her two dogs into Australia. They added that the investigations are ongoing over allegations that Heard lied under oath. This is incredibly serious as perjury carries a maximum jail term of 14 years, while illegal importation can result in a seven-year stretch under the Queensland Penal Code. In fact, the TikTok video of the Australian Senate actually showed confirmation of an investigation taking place. In the clip, Peter Lane, then listed as First Assistant Secretary of the Compliance Division, said that giving false testimony is an offence under the Crimes Act, so that is what they are now investigating. Number two, how she got the Aquaman role. During the trial, DC Films President Walter Hamada said in a pre-taped deposition from March 15th, that Heard and Momoa weren't well matched as a screen couple. Quote, they didn't really have a lot of chemistry together. He added, I think editorially, they were able to make that relationship work in the first movie, but there was concern that it took a lot of effort to get there, which makes it pretty clear that Heard didn't get the role solely based on her audition, because even the best actors just can't fake chemistry. Over the course of the trial, it was eventually revealed that Depp played a major role in getting her cast after she auditioned even claiming that he made a phone call to Warner Brothers executives to seal the deal. The thing is, if she ever wants another role in Hollywood, she absolutely needs to refute these claims, because any casting director who hires her is going to get a lot of flack for it and risk their project being boycotted from the get-go. It would be a PR nightmare. Number one, 
suppressed evidence. This is a big one and the only substantial thing that she's still holding over Johnny Depp. In her NBC interview, she mentioned that there was so much evidence which was left out of the US trial. In fact, she had already shared some of it during the interview in the form of therapist notes, which she alleged that Depp had physically attacked her. Quote, there's a binder worth of years of notes dating back to 2011 from the very beginning of my relationship that were taken by my doctor. These notes date back to 2012 and continue until the couple's split in 2016. And on one page, the therapist wrote that Heard claimed Depp had hit her and threw her to the floor. Another note eight months later said that Depp had ripped her nightgown and threw her on the bed. She told Savannah Guthrie that the notes represented years of real time explanations of what was going on. Although this new evidence has already been criticized as fake, Heard clearly believes she has much more to reveal and she's saving it for her revenge book. Number 10. It's already been proven. One of the main issues with her interview on NBC Dateline and the potential book of what went on during her and Johnny's relationship is that the majority of the accusations that she continues to discuss and stand by as the truth were already determined by a jury to be false. The evidence presented by both sides proving that her allegations were not based in any sort of fact and the court at the court of public opinion not believing her. So the precedent has been set that the statements were defamatory. So if she takes to the public to continue making these accusations and allegations and continues to write about them in the future book, she is continuing to commit the crime of defamation. So this could put her wide open for being taken to court again for trying to push the same scenarios as truth and trying to pull Johnny Depp down and present him as the villain and herself as the victim. Number 9. Perjury Another thing that people are calling for Amber Heard to be taken to court over, even since she first took the stand, is for her committing the act of perjury. Perjury is when you purposefully and knowingly lie in court while under the oath. One defamation lawyer said that it's definitely possible that she could face the charge, saying, I think that as this case goes on and we start seeing more and more objective evidence that she is lying about things under oath, that's when it starts crossing the line into the possibility that she is fabricating evidence, fabricating photos, fabricating bruises, altering evidence, and then submitting it. Perjury is a big deal in court cases as it can put a massive wrench in delivery justice. One of the most important parts of a case is evidence, as you have to prove that whatever happened did actually happen. It's not the old days anymore and simply saying that someone is a witch isn't enough to get them burned at the stake. So witnesses and testimonies are incredibly important and it's crucial that they are actually true. Lies can lead to innocent people being put away and the guilty going free. So what are some of the things that Amber Heard is being accused of having lied about while on the stand that could end up in court? Number 8. Bruises one of the biggest things that people pointed out as being a lie from Amber Heard was when she was talking about the injuries that she had received from Depp. Depp's lawyers were hard on her about the fact that they had found photos from around the time of the alleged injuries that didn't showcase any of the previous bruises or marks that Heard's team had displayed in different photos. Amber Heard went on to describe that she had become proficient in using makeup to cover up the bruises, and that's why they hadn't been present in the photos that Depp's team had submitted to evidence. However, when she describes the method in which she applied the makeup, she actually does it out of order, saying that she used the color corrector after the foundation, which would not cover up a mark, but instead create one. Photos from the trial also seem to show the palette, which she embarrassingly referred to as a bruise kit, and people on social media were able to find what they think is that exact palette, which is actually called a theatrical bruise and abrasion kit, and is used specifically for the purpose of making fake bruises. In our number seventh spot we have Down the Rabbit Hole by Holly Madison. Holly Madison is known for dating the famous owner of Playboy magazine Hugh Hefner. She is also known for starring in the television show The Girls Next Door with two of Hugh's other girlfriends. In this tell all, Holly reveals what it was really like to be a Playboy bunny and live in the mansion with Hefner. After leaving the mansion, they actually did not leave on good terms and apparently never repaired their friendship. After the release of her book, Hefner told People magazine that he believed believed Holly had chosen to rewrite history in an attempt to stay in the spotlight. Her response to this was that everything she wrote was 100% true and that it's not the version that he would like to tell. Yikes. This book may have gotten her into a little trouble, but 
I'm personally glad that she wrote it because it was a fun one to read. Number six, therapist notes. This lie was a piece of evidence that was not actually accepted into court, it being disallowed under the grounds of it being considered hearsay. She brought it up in her Dateline episode where she referred to it as the one piece of evidence that she wished would have been considered. This being therapist notes that had allegedly been written during her relationship with Johnny. Amber saying it is a binders worth of years worth of notes about things Johnny had done to her. Many people however have looked at the pictures of the supposed notes and started to analyze them. One therapist claiming that it looks nothing like how a real therapist would write and people comparing the handwriting to Amber's own, finding them shockingly similar. So if she tried to explain these in her book and present them as factual, anything new in there could probably be considered as being defamatory. 5. The Senate Meeting A TikTok video was posted this week of a Senate meeting of the Rural and Regional Affairs and Transport Legislation Committee, which took place on October 21st back in 2020. The clip showed Senator Tony Sheldon of the Australian Labor Party being asked about the timeline of the perjury investigation against Heard. Quote, there was evidence presented in the London court case which suggested false statements were provided in the court case in Australia in 2016. So we are investigating that. In a TikTok video which was viewed more than 400,000 times, the politician said that as he understands it, the former estate manager of Johnny Depp, Kevin Murphy, said in a witness statement that he told Heard by mail, telephone and in person that she could not take the dogs to Australia because the relevant paperwork and permits were not complete. As the clip came to a close, Lane then confirmed that this directly contradicted Heard's statement at the time of the trial, as she said it was a misunderstanding as she had assumed her husband's assistance had arranged the Terrier's passage into the country. Number 4. The Dateline Special Before talks of the potential book started going around, those following the aftermath of the trial were excited to see Amber Heard's appearance on an NBC Dateline television special. People were wondering what new information might come out and if Amber Heard might be as heavily mocked for her performance in this as she was for her performance in the trial. But most people were left disappointed as it really didn't present viewers with any new information about what had been going on, save for Amber's mention of the disallowed so called therapist notes. She mostly restated the previous accusations she had made throughout the trial, still standing by her declaration that they were true. While it may have been a bit of a boring and disappointing episode for avid viewers, it does raise some concerns for Amber's situation and her determination to continue speaking out. Because the airing of this episode can be considered another publication, her statements could once again fall under defamation. Amber towing a very dangerous line with everything that she says. Number 3. Therapist Notes Much has been made of the therapist notes that Heard claims would prove Depp physically attacked her. Quote, There's a binder worth of years of notes dating back to 2011, from the very beginning of my relationship that were taken by my doctor. After those notes were examined, it was revealed that on one page, the therapist wrote that Heard claimed Depp had hit her and threw her on the floor. Another note eight months later said that Depp had ripped her nightgown and threw her on the bed. She told Guthrie that the notes represented years and years of real time explanations of what was going on. Even Bredhoft claimed that her client's medical records were suppressed, which she says were very significant because they showed a pattern going all the way back to 2012 of her reporting the domestic violence to her therapist. But if it was so significant, why wasn't it counted? Well, Judge Penny had ruled the notes as hearsay and refused to allow the evidence into the trial, which does make total sense. Number 2. The Previous Trial As some of you may be aware, a previous defamation trial took place between Johnny Depp and Amber a few years ago in the UK. Johnny Depp was suing the Sun publication for an article where they had referred to the actor as a wife beater. The basis for this coming from the accusations and allegations Amber had made in her original Washington Post op-ed. This trial however did not end well for Johnny, many people crediting this to the fact that it was not determined by a jury, but instead a judge. The article was found as not being defamatory and Johnny did not receive the $50 million that he had been requesting. This fact, as acknowledged by Amber, may be a pushing force for her to appeal the verdict of the 2022 trial and prolong the defamation case. Her and her lawyers both believe that having a jury was a bad choice, as they were not sequestered and could have fallen victim to outside influence and bias. So this precedent of the UK trial may lead to this thing being dragged out even longer. Number 1. Other Celebrities When the trial started circulating, the public weren't the only people to have opinions on the trial and the two people involved in it. Many other celebrities weighed in with their perspective and most took sides between the two performers. 
As a result, it looks like Amber Heard made some enemies in other celebs. This whole video, we've been talking about potential defamation and other charges in regards to Amber Heard and Johnny Depp. But what if Amber decides to mention some other celebrities within her book? This could leave her open to a whole new trial or controversy between her and someone else. And with the statements we've heard from some famous people towards Heard, it wouldn't surprise me if Amber felt like the pages of her book would be a good place to get a bit of revenge. In our number 10 spot, we have Kris Jenner and All Things Kardashian by Kris Jenner. When this book came out, it had such hype because it was really during the peak years of Keeping Up With The Kardashians, the TV show, but also, it had a little bit of controversy tied to it. In this book, Kris Jenner speaks about her life, including her affair that broke up her and her late husband, Robert Kardashian, as well as details of what it was like being best friends with OJ Simpson's wife, Nicole Simpson. She gets real candid about how she knew about OJ hurting Nicole throughout the years, which honestly was crazy to hear about. Her book allegedly got her into a bit of trouble with her family though, especially the part when she wrote about her affair. And fair enough, that is such a tricky situation and probably a really sad time for the family that I'm sure they didn't want to relive. In our number nine spot, we have It's Not Okay by Andy Dorfman. Andy Dorfman is famously known as being a contestant on The Bachelor and Bachelorette franchises. Her book is so famously titled It's Not Okay after her very famous moment with contestant Juan Paulo, where he continued to tell her that it's okay when she really didn't feel that it was. Her book is an exclusive look into the behind the scenes of her relationships with other Bachelor contestants Juan Paulo, Nick Vial, and Josh Murray. The book had a lot of controversy when it was released, and specifically, Josh Murray was not happy about it. He went on to comment that she had some not so kind things to say, that she depicted him in such a false way, and that some of the things are just ludicrous. Yikes. Well, Josh, why don't you write a book about your experience and clear that up for us then? Honestly though, that was so long ago, so maybe not. You might have missed the boat with this one. In our number eight spot, we have Life on the Ramona Coaster by Ramona Singer. This book didn't so much get Ramona into trouble as it seemingly just made her more unlikable judging by what reviewers have said. Ramona Singer is a cast member of The Real Housewives of New York and is known for getting into quite a few fights in her time with the other ladies on the show. The show kind of already casts her in a bit of an unlikable light, but apparently she didn't do herself any favors in this tell-all. Apparently the book might have caused some more tension between her and her ex-husband as she wrote about her thoughts on their divorce. But most people just felt uncomfortable reading about her daughter's letter to her father. Some people claimed it to be disturbing and inappropriate. Number seven, flawed legal logic. In court documents that were filed for her appeal, Elaine Bredhoft said that the case rests on flawed legal logic, arguing that instead of proving how the op-ed negatively affected Depp's claims, they were based solely on defamation by implication theory, abandoning any claims that her statements were actually false. The attorney also argued that Depp's legal team said it would focus on the period after the op-ed came out, but instead widen to encompass events and statements from way back in 2016. The filing argues that instead of proving her to hurt his career with her 2018 essay, which is why he sued her for defamation, he was instead trying to disprove the initial 2016 domestic violence allegations, which were not up for judgment. Heard's team also claims that Depp didn't actually prove that he suffered that much financial hardship because of the op-ed. In fact, they claimed that it was very unlikely the actor would have appeared in Pirates of the Caribbean 6 after all, because he himself said he wouldn't have taken the role for a million alpacas. In our number six spot, we have I Didn't Come Here to Make Friends by Courtney Robertson. All right. I read this one and may I just say, boy does this book have some boiling hot tea with a side sugar cookie. I would not expect anything less of Bachelor alum Courtney Robertson. Back in the day when The Bachelor was in its peak seasons, Courtney Robertson was the most hated contestant I have ever seen on the show. The Bachelor community was unanimous in their decision that they did not like Courtney and I cannot imagine what it must have felt like to be her. Of course, I needed to read her book and try to get into her brain and see what was going through her brain at the time. The book of course had so much backlash as Courtney, who is known for her honesty, spoke about her relationship with Ben Flagnick and how he was not as he appeared on TV. Probably spelt, I probably pronounced his name wrong, but whatever, that's a hard one. She even spoke about her relationship with Entourage star Adrian Grenier and what he was like behind closed doors. 
it was honestly quite the read. Number five, new information. On the topic of new information that the therapist notes might be hiding, there is also the fact that Amber Heard will have a great opportunity to bring up plenty of new accusations between the two covers. This is why many people are saying she needs to be extremely careful about what she says and how she says it, as it could turn into the results of the op-ed all over again. If new accusations are made or even more information is added to the original ones, Johnny Depp and his team are open to finding them defamatory as well. As as long as he can prove that these new allegations and statements cause some sort of damage to him, as this is required to prevail in a defamation case. In our number four spot, we have Inside Out by Demi Moore. Demi Moore is known for being a famous actress starring in iconic movies such as Ghost, G.I. Jane, and A Few Good Men. She's also known for the scandal of the early 2000s, her marriage to Ashton Kutcher, an actor that was 16 years younger than her. I remember being a little baby teen and gossiping about this with my friends. It was such a scandal. Anyways, many moons later, long after they divorced in 2011, Demi released her biography about her life and in it she gets quite candid about her relationship with Ashton. She speaks about how at many times their relationship consisted of three people instead of two. If, if you catch my drift. And she talks about how she only agreed to this to keep the relationship going. Yikes. Sounds like it was perhaps doomed to end. I don't know, maybe that's just me. This did cause a bit of controversy when it was released, but the dust has settled and the world is now obsessed with Ashton's relationship with Mila Kunis. Number three, the huge TMZ lie. The crazy testimony from Morgan Tremaine, former TMZ journalist, revealed that the celebrity news publication had been able to get access to exclusive photos and videos of her during her divorce from Depp. Tremaine told the court that he was tipped off on her whereabouts and he was able to dispatch paparazzi to her location. So why was this a mess for her? Well, in her own recorded testimony, she claimed that she was caught off guard by the photographers and that she has no idea how TMZ got a hold of the story. This is something she really needs to address in her tell all book because there's a clip of her which went viral showing the exact moment she slipped up by admitting that TMZ was alerted. In the video, she tries to hide the mistake by suddenly wiping her face, but it's very clear from body language alone and her big physical reaction that she had been caught in a lie. Heard has some serious explaining to do about that moment. In our number two spot, we have The Secrets of My Life by Caitlyn Jenner. Formerly known as Bruce Jenner, the American Olympic athlete, this book is about Caitlyn's life and what it was like to transition into a woman. Apparently when this book was released, it created a lot of tension within the Kardashian-Jenner family. Allegedly, Caitlyn didn't share with her family that she was going to transition, and they learned about the details when she revealed it to the public. Apparently, once again, when she dropped this book, there was a lot of tension in the family as old wounds were brought up, and it caused quite the separation over the years. As of now, though, it really does seem like the Kardashian-Jenner clan have moved into more healing times, and so I think all of that drama is just water under. In our number one spot, we have Things I Should Have Said by Jamie Lynn Spears. Jamie Lynn Spears is an actress known for her TV show Zoe 101 and known for being the sister of pop star Britney Spears. Earlier in 2002, she released a book and man, did it get her into some trouble. First off, her timing was pretty horrible. Her sister was just coming out of her conservatorship and the nation was cheering her on. And then Jamie drops a book at the same time while all the hype is still going. Brittany called her sister out for the book and accused her of using her and it was not great. Not only did the public jump on hating on Jamie for her poor timing and alleged lies, but also there were some other people that were mentioned in the book that came out of the woodwork to make sure that the public knew that she was lying, such as her former Zoe 101 castmate Alexa Nicholas, who Jamie Lynn allegedly bullied, but yet in her book she spoke of the opposite. This book was just a mess and honestly made her look worse than before she released it, sadly. Number 10, The Appeal. Elaine Bredhoft told NBC's Savannah Guthrie that she will absolutely be appealing the verdict reached in the defamation trial. Quote, we even had to try to get the UK judgment in to dismiss this case because he already has his shot. She also goes on to speak about the 
evidence that supposedly did not come in. It turns out she was serious as within a month of the verdict in Johnny Depp and Amber Heard's defamation lawsuit, Heard's legal team has officially begun the appeal process. In a lengthy filing in Virginia court on Friday, the actress's legal team is seeking to throw out the June verdict in the high profile defamation lawsuit by arguing that the ruling had a number of issues, including poor legal reasoning, an improperly vetted jury and excessively awarded damages. Bredhoft also insisted that Heard's medical records were suppressed and that a number of things were allowed in court that should not have been allowed in, which caused the jury to be confused. But even if the appeal is unsuccessful, it's clear that Heard believes the trial was totally rigged. Number 9. Insufficient Evidence Heard's attorneys have brought forth a 43 page memorandum which asks for the verdict in Johnny Depp's libel case to be tossed on the grounds of insufficient evidence and with it a more than $10 million award. The main reason? Well, Heard's team argued that it was false for Depp to claim that he lost his role in Pirates of the Caribbean film series all because of her op-ed she wrote in the Washington Post, citing the fact that Depp didn't provide evidence that the op-ed was the reason he lost the role in the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. The lengthy document claims that there were articles noting he wouldn't be in the sixth film more than two months before Heard's essay was published, and that because Depp was never officially contracted to do a sixth film, he cannot claim damages for a film he was never contracted to do, insisting that the film was already in development without him on board before Heard's essay was even published. Number 8. Juror 15 Heard also claims that one of the jurors who served during the trial was not properly vetted, saying that there were problems with their credibility. The filing points to Juror 15 as proof, arguing that there appears to be a 25 year discrepancy between their birthday on court records and other identity documents. They urged the court to investigate whether Juror 15 properly served on the jury because their listed birth year was 1945. And according to her attorneys, the juror was clearly born later than 1945. In fact, publicly available information demonstrates that he appears to have been born in 1970. The motion goes on to say, quote, this discrepancy raises the question of whether or not Juror 15 actually received a summons for jury duty and was properly vetted by the court to serve on the jury, basically claiming that the jury selection was rigged because of the massive age discrepancy. Heard's legal team are hoping this alleged discrepancy can raise questions over the suitability of the jury panel as a whole. The filing also alleges that Juror 15 may be an entirely different person than who they say they are, which would completely compromise the due process of the trial. Number 7. The Donation Another hole that Amber Heard dug for herself was her apparent mistake of mixing up the words pledge and donation. When she first went through her divorce with Johnny Depp, she pledged to donate the money that she earned to two different charities, the American Civil Liberties Union and the Children's Hospital Los Angeles, saying she would split up the money over separate installments. By the time the trial came around, it was revealed that she hadn't even donated close to the amount that she had promised, and Depp's lawyers called her out on that. This is shocking because back in 2018, Amber Heard said that she had donated $7 million in total. When asked about why she had said that since she hadn't actually donated it, she said, well I use pledge and donate synonymously, which literally nobody else does. Pledge being the promise to do so and donate being actually doing it. So she was basically trying to cover it up by saying that she had used donate to say she was going to donate it and not that she actually had. Is this too confusing yet? Let's just move on. Number 6. Lack of motive This one is really interesting. Another reason Heard's team is filing the appeal is because they claim she actually believes her own allegations. That's right, her team is arguing that what actually matters here is whether or not Heard believes that she's a real victim of domestic violence. They are saying that if she believes her own allegations, a jury can't find that she acted with malice and that she would have written the op-ed without any bad intentions. The court documents insist that Depp's legal team never actually proved she didn't believe her own claims. In the appeal, the text says, quote, the jury's verdict was obviously influenced by Mr. Depp's pleas in the face of the court's preclusion of Mrs. Hurd's introduction of evidence that Mr. Depp had, in fact, already been tried in the court of his choice for committing 12 acts of domestic violence. So basically her team is trying to write off the verdict by saying that Hurd did not have malicious intent by writing the op-ed. Number 5. Excessive Damages As a part of the appeal filed by Amber Hurd's legal team, they insist that the damages award 
reported to her ex-husband are far too high considering the verdict. The lengthy document goes on to read, quote, the jury's compensatory and punitive damage award were excessive as a matter of law, and added that Depp only deserved to receive reputational damages, insinuating that the damages awarded to him were blown way out of proportion. If you don't know, the two parties were found to have defamed each other in June, but the jury ruled largely in Depp's favor, awarding him $15 million in damages, while Heard was only awarded $2 million. The judge later lessened the punitive damages to $350,000, citing limits set by state law. Following the trial, Heard's lawyer said in June that the actor wouldn't be able to pay the monetary penalty awarded to Depp. But Judge Penny told Heard's attorney that if she wanted to appeal the verdict, she would have to put up an $8.35 million bond with an annual 6% interest. Representatives for Heard have said that she does not have the money to pay Depp or meet the bond. So not sure how that's going to happen. Number four, discrediting witnesses. Following her lawyer, Elaine Bredhoft, Heard in fact claimed that the actor paid the witnesses brought by him for their testimonies. In a shocking clip released by NBC, Savannah Guthrie asked the actress about the various reasons that the jury might have had for not believing her. 36 year old Texas native said, quote, they had sat in those seats and heard over three weeks of nonstop, relentless testimony from paid employees. And towards the end of the trial, randos, as I say. That's right, she literally called the witnesses for Johnny Depp randoms, and many people believe she was even talking about British model Kate Moss. She later also stated that the jurors did not believe her claims, as the three and a half weeks of testimonies by Johnny Depp's attorneys was an attempt to portray her as a non credible person. In fact, the Aquaman actress added that she thought the testimonies from Depp's witnesses conditioned the jury not to believe one word that came out of her mouth. In our number three spot, we have drinking and tweeting by Brandy Glanville. Brandy Glanville is known for being a former Real Housewives of Beverly Hills star. Are we really that surprised that she made it on this list? Gotta love Brandy. Her relentless honesty makes for such great TV, and she's so funny too. I would be terrified to be friends with her, honestly, but I love watching her. In her two books, Drinking and Tweeting and Other Brandy Blunders and Drinking and Dating, P.S. Social Media is Ruining Romance, Brandy gets super candid about her life people that have hurt her and people that have used her. The books had a lot of backlash, but honestly, that was probably intentional because it definitely would have made more people go out and buy them. Especially if she spoke about big celebs such as Leanne Rimes. People are going to want to read about these scandals even if they don't watch The Real Housewives of Beverly Hills and don't know who Brandy is. So it was probably a tactic, let's be real. Number two, new text evidence. Heard also took issue with texts that weren't allowed into the trial. She actually claimed that the text messages she sent to friends and family during her relationship with Deb are evidence of the domestic violence that she suffered during their marriage. In one message, Heard claims she sent her father in 2014, she wrote that Deb kicked her in front of everyone during a private flight. In fact, that very incident was a subject of testimony in the couple's defamation trial as well. And another in 2015 read, quote, Johnny did a number on me tonight. I'm safe and I'm with my support tonight, but I need some real help. Can I come tomorrow? I called earlier because I thought thought I had a concussion and I didn't know if I should have called police. By exposing the text messages during her NBC interview, it's clear that she believes this new line of evidence is going to somehow muddy the waters of the case, even though she knows that it wasn't actually allowed in the trial. And number one, discrediting audio tapes. The audio recordings played during Depp's testimony show her admitting to starting a physical fight between them and downplaying his reaction to the incident. When speaking on NBC with Savannah Guthrie, Heard claimed that the audio tapes were edited, quote, what you would hear in those clips are not evidence of what was happening. But when Guthrie said that Heard admitted to starting fights on recorded audio, she said, quote, I know how much has been made of these audio tapes. They were first leaked online after being edited. What you would hear in those clips are not evidence of what was happening, claiming that the 20 second clips are not representative of the two or three hour conversations they came from. But when Guthrie asked her why she hadn't submitted the full recordings, she just said, I'm not a lawyer. Well, now she is really trying to discredit those tapes and insinuate that the trial was rigged. Number 10, illegal importation. In 2015, Heard and Depp defied Australia's Quarantine Act that required dogs entering the country from the US to be declared and spend 10 days in quarantine. The then couple landed in hot water after Heard brought their two dogs with her when she visited Depp down under as he filmed the fifth installment of the Pirates of the Caribbean franchise. Heard allegedly said no on her immigration form when asked if she needed to declare any animals, which resulted in Heard getting in trouble with the 
Australian government for breaching biosecurity laws. The couple was told in May 2015 that they could either get the dogs out of the country or Aussie officials would put down the pups, named Boo and Pestle. When asked why Depp wasn't charged as well, the prosecutor's office said that there had been a lack of admissible evidence against anyone except Heard. 9. The Australian Environment The country has very strict animal import laws. When you really think about it, it's no surprise that the government came down so hard on Amber Heard. Since Australia is isolated geographically and some of its wildlife are found only on that continent, any disruption to the natural balance, such as the introduction of non-native animals and their associated diseases, could ripple through the ecosystem. Basically, the penalties for offenders are so tough because the country's animals are so vulnerable and due to the isolation of being on a literal island, the native animals are highly susceptible to visiting animals contagions because they've never had the chance to develop resistance. So realistically, Heard bringing the two dogs into the country without an import permit and without first subjecting them to a mandated quarantine was a recipe for disaster. Number 8. Video Apology The Hollywood couple had to apologize to the Australian public for their terrier's unauthorized visit down under in a very awkward public act of remorse. A scripted video in which Depp says Australians are just as unique as their wildlife. The video was submitted to the court as Miss Heard escaped conviction for failing to declare the couple's dogs pistol and Boo when visiting Depp in May. Even Australia's Deputy Prime Minister, Barnaby Joyce, said that the couple were less than willing participants in the video. The actors described Australia as a wonderful island with a treasure trove of unique plants, animals and people, and warned others to respect its laws. Quote, Australians are just as unique, both warm and direct. When you disrespect Australian law, they will tell you firmly. It is not clear whose idea that video was, but reports said that Australian prosecutors had vetted the dialogue beforehand. Reaction on social media was swift and brutal, with many comparing the short film to government propaganda. Number 7. Her Defense Team Another reason why Heard is still facing legal trouble for the incident in Australia is because of her lawyer at the time. The actress's attorney in 2015 was Jeremy Kirk, and he told the court that his client never meant to lie on her incoming passenger card. Kirk said that the actress was simply jet-lagged and just assumed her assistance had sorted out all the paperwork. Quote, she has made a tired, terrible mistake, but that reasoning fell on deaf ears as prosecutor Peter Callahan said ignorance and fatigue were no excuse and that the laws apply to everyone. Kirk reportedly cited video evidence that the actress made in a gesture of contribution over her alleged breaches of Australia's 108 year old quarantine laws, claiming that his client made no attempt to hide the dogs at Brisbane airport and she did not understand the meaning and significance of declaring no to customs questions about having animals. 6. Publicity at the time, the then agriculture minister Barnaby Joyce criticized the actress and actor for bringing the animals into Australia without properly adhering to the law. Quote, if we start letting movie stars, even though they've been the sexiest man alive twice, to come into our nation with pets, then why don't we just break the laws for everybody? Joyce, who now serves as Australia's deputy prime minister, infamously said that it's time that Pistol and Boo bug it off back to the United States. So he basically told them to get lost. The comments elevated what might have otherwise been a local spat into a global delight for comedians and broadcasters all across the nation. Surprisingly, a large portion of the Australian public actually agreed with the minister's sentiment, and the couple started receiving widespread criticism down under. The Guardian even ran a dog death countdown ticker, while comedian John Oliver dedicated a more than six minute segment to making fun of the whole ordeal. Australia hadn't really heard much of Amber before the incident, but it's safe to say that it was terrible publicity. In our number five spot, we have Melissa. Melissa Explains It All by Melissa Joan Hart. I have to say that Melissa Joan Hart is one of those people that I will just love no matter what because my all time favorite show is Sabrina the Teenage Witch. So, But when Melissa dropped her book Melissa Explains It All, it caused a bit of controversy. People were actually a bit taken aback by her candidness. She revealed in her book that a certain Dawson's Creek star may not have been a great kisser, as well as she spoke about her party days with Britney Spears. So I have to admit that I am a forever Melissa stan, so I may be biased, but in any case, what I find to be a good kiss may be horrible to the next guy. Kissing is so relative, so we as a society should just never take that seriously and we should just see it as proof that you know maybe two people aren't compatible. She needed to have some kind of exclusive for the book, but honestly, she really did the work for her marketing team with that comment, so hopefully she didn't even bother to get a marketing team, because girl boss vibes. <laughs> 
This number is actually really me just praising Melissa Joan Hart. <laughs> I can't help it, I love her. Number four, falsifying travel documents. Accompanied by her now ex-husband, Heard pleaded guilty to falsifying immigration documents in an Australian court in 2015, stating that she had made a mistake due to sleep deprivation. Two months later, the actress was officially charged with two counts of illegally importing animals, and the case was closed after she pleaded guilty in a Queensland court for falsifying quarantine documents. She ticked a box on her passenger arrival card indicating that she had no animals when arriving by private jet in Brisbane on the 21st of April. For faking the documents, she ended up being placed on a good behaviour bond and copying a $1,000 fine. In fact, according to Guardian Australia, providing a false document on entry under the nation's Migration Act carries a maximum penalty of 10 years and a fine of 117800 Australian dollars, which is really interesting considering that the actress only got a slap on the wrist for the whole incident, which the Australian public collectively felt was quite unfair. Number three, public opinion. With the massive spectacle that the trial became and kind of still is, you'd be lying if you said that the majority of the public hadn't turned against Amber Heard. From the social media memes to call outs and personal attacks, it's clear that Amber Heard's reputation has never been worse, and she seems to only have a small group of fans left attempting to defend her. Over the past few weeks, we have heard constant cries from people that Amber needs to go back on the stand for perjury, and calling her out for other potential crimes. As a result, if she ended up going back to trial for defamation again, or potentially her even attempting to sue Johnny again, it probably won't end very well for her. As was alluded to by Amber and her lawyers, they believe that the jury was swayed by social media during the trial. If they ever needed to go back again, you would be hard pressed to find anyone to sit on the jury who had no previous knowledge of the original trials, and would not have bias in either direction. Because of the eyes she has on her, every little thing she says is being carefully dissected and analyzed. So if she wants to write a book, I'll say it again, she needs to be incredibly careful about what she says. Number 2. Depp's Estate Manager Kevin Murphy, the actor's former estate manager who worked for Johnny Depp for over 8 years, concerned Australian officials when he told the London court that Heard had ordered him to lie under oath, to cover up the fact that she flew pets into Queensland on a private jet without even declaring them. In a written statement, Murphy told the High Court that he had repeatedly warned the actress about Australia's strict animal entry rules, but when the smuggling controversy went public, Heard demanded that he provide a false statement to the Australian court saying that she didn't know anything about the requirements. When Murphy said that he was uncomfortable with lying, Heard allegedly said, quote, Well, I want your help on this. I wouldn't want you to have a problem with your job. He testified that Heard started threatening his job stability unless he cooperated with providing a declaration that supported her false account for the Australian proceedings. Number one, witness statements. Now, this could definitely be the nail in the coffin for Heard when it comes to her legal trouble that she's still facing in Australia. Murphy, Depp's former estate manager, admitted during his testimony in London that he actually went along with Heard's demands. Quote, because of this, I felt extreme pressure to cooperate, despite knowing this would involve being untruthful. He later confirmed that he had in fact been contacted by the FBI and had agreed to provide Australian authorities with a witness statement. A representative for the Department of Agriculture, Water and the Environment confirmed this, telling E! News, quote, the department is seeking to obtain witness statements and once obtained, the Commonwealth Director of Public Prosecutions will consider whether the evidence is sufficient to warrant pursuance on the matter. An attorney for Heard criticised the investigation, telling the outlet that the Australian government and the FBI are victimising a person who has already been adjudicated to be the victim of domestic violence.